choosing God is an important thing every day. It's a choice. It's not something that we do subconsciously. It's definitely not something we do naturally. Our hearts are naturally in rebellion from God. You know, um, it says in Matthew that we should watch and pray that we fall not into temptation because the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and also welcome if you are new. I'm so grateful to have you all here. So my name is Aquia B and here on this channel I cover all things faith, culture and encouragement. And in today's video we're going to be talking about something that is so close to my heart and I'm sure it's close to the hearts of many other believers around the world. And the title is Get Back to God. So why would I even have to make a video with this title? I think that so many people around the world, so many Christians experience feeling a distance from God, feeling like they're going through a season where they are physically, spiritually, emotionally distant from God. And that can be from a range of different roots, a range of different sources. So why do we actually get that feeling? We're gonna explore that today. What can we do with those feelings? We're gonna explore that today. And how can we productively move forward to ensure that we can safeguard ourselves from this experience going forward? So we're gonna cover all of those things in today's video. But first of all, let's start with why you're actually feeling far from God. So we've all been there and it's actually a really good sign that you're asking this question because if you're going through life and you feel distant from God or you are distant from God and you're not really doing anything about it, you don't really think twice about it, then this video might just be a wake up call. And if you are noticing this feeling of distance from God, this video is just for you. It's an indicator that you don't want to be stuck in this place. You want to go back to an intimacy that you once felt deeper with God at one point. Um, I just want to start us off with this scripture and it's going to be like the umbrella scripture for this whole video and I just want you to keep this in mind. No matter what I say, I'm saying it out of a place of love and direction. It's not like a hot, uh, Helen Brimstone video, it's definitely an encouragement but just to umbrella this video I'm going to read from Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 and it says, let us therefore draw near with boldness unto the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find and may find grace to help us in time of need and i just want us to just break down this passage a little bit before we go any further just to really understand what i'm trying to say about it so this scripture is saying let us therefore draw near with boldness unto the throne of grace. There's two things in there. Actually, there's three things in there, but I'm going to start off with the first, number one. It says, let us therefore draw near. So what is that telling us about the heart of God? When we feel distant, when we've done something wrong, anything like that, it's telling us to actually draw near. Sometimes when you've done something wrong to another human, another person, you might feel like, oh, better stay away, run away. Oh my gosh, shame, hide. Like, don't want to be in the same space as this person, or I'm sure they don't want me to be in the same space as them but actually God's heart for us is that he actually wants us to draw near to him in this time the second thing is draw near with boldness and how can we draw near with boldness because of the next bit because it's a throne of grace this is such a big thing in this whole video you might be feeling guilty for feeling far from God or like if you actually are far from God and you know, it's not just a feeling, it's a flippant feeling, you know that you've actually distanced yourself from God and you've stepped away from him. God's throne is a throne of grace. And what does it say that proceeds from that? It says that we may receive mercy. And what is mercy? There's a difference between mercy and grace. What is mercy? So mercy is the thing. Mercy is what God extends to us when we actually deserve a uh, consequence we deserve a punishment but actually he withholds that because he's merciful it's due to us but actually he withholds that because he's merciful grace is approaching that throne of grace it's not because of anything that we've done so it's different we've not actually done anything to receive it but god gives it willingly and freely so it's almost like a gift it's a you know, it's something good that we don't deserve that God freely gives to us. And then it says, finally, and may find grace to help us in time of need. So God isn't just, you know, this high and mighty being who is distant and, you know, unfeeling. Actually, 
he wants to give us that grace which will then help us he wants to equip us in our time of need so he doesn't just want to give us things when life is great but actually he's with us all the way through even when things are rough and we're in a time of need so with that said let's get to the core of this video let's get to the issues um why we actually could feel far from god why are we feeling far from god and i've appointed um a few points to this video so if i don't cover everything don't feel like you're lost and like the world is falling to pieces i'm sure you wouldn't but this is not a in-depth um, thing. I've not studied this for like years and you know got all the answers to this question of why you might feel far from God. This is just a, first of all a few things that I might have experienced and then second of all things that I've went through apart from my own experiences because I think a lot of life life's lessons are things that you know they go on to teach us so beyond my life lessons I then thought of all the things I've not experienced what can I glean from this wisdom of the scripture? So if I've not experienced something and I have experienced a lot um, in this area, then, you know, what could be the things that God is wanting me to relay to you guys? So there's a bit of a mix. There's things that I've personally experienced and then things that I've realized through reading the scripture that this could actually be applicable to you guys as well. And also to myself um, as I walk out my Christian walk. So the issues. The first thing is that you could have been offended away from God. And this is quite a sensitive one. Um, so I don't want to, you know, tread on eggshells around this, but I definitely want to um, speak truth to it and be very open about it and try and address it the best I can. So a question that I have experienced a lot with being offended away from God is traumatic situations, situations that really shouldn't have happened in a normal and healthy environment so you end up with the question of how could this happen and this is something that has offended you away from god and this is a very valid thing you know life happens and people have free will and people can be awful people can hurt other people and whether it's yourself that's done something or somebody else and it's caused something awful you might think how could this happen and I think it just goes back to the age old question of evil and suffering. And I think there's a lot of great explanations and um, wisdom that comes from the scripture in terms of dealing with evil and suffering. But ultimately there is a mystery behind it in some regards. No one can look you directly in the eyes as a Christian and tell you exactly why you're going through what you're going through. Only God knows some things. And even though we have a great source of wisdom in the scriptures to help us and guide us through times of suffering they don't always provide a specific reasoning for why you're going through that so one of the first um great pieces of wisdom that i um, gleaned from the bible was from the book of job in chapter 12 verse 22 and this verse says he reveals the deep things of darkness and brings utter darkness into the light so this book, this scripture actually, I'm sure it's, you know, comes from such a painful place. Job, the book of Job is all about pain and suffering. Like if you want a book on pain and suffering, just go to Job. You know, pain and suffering can be found in lots of places in the scriptures, but Job is my go-to book for that because, and sometimes I don't even want to read it because I'm like, this is too much for me. Like, I don't know if I can deal with this, but Job is the book for pain and suffering, I think. And I think a lot of people would agree. This scripture supports the notion that God is for justice. God sees what you're going through. And it doesn't mean that he wants it to happen, but it does mean that he has an awareness of it. And if we know who God is, we know that he won't just see it and turn a blind eye, that he'll actually bring justice. Um, and we should trust him for that because he's a trustworthy God. And I think one of the issues of feeling far from God actually, um, and I don't think I wrote this down and I've filmed this once before actually, but I was like, I need to do this again. I need to make it more consistent and flowy. Um, but I think one thing that makes us feel far from God is forgetting who God actually is. And I think that's been true for me a lot. I sometimes forget the core things about God that make him who he is. And then I'm the one that retreats and backs off because I'm not strong in my foundation and your foundation is the thing that keeps you stable. So if we forget who God is, we forget that he's a just God, we forget that he sees everything and will do something with that justice that is part of him, it is him. Um, so yeah, I think that's one of the cause is that 
maybe you've gone through something and you're offended away from God. Um, but we have to know and remember that God is just, God has justice to exercise and he will not turn a blind eye to our pain and suffering. Uh, I want to also just speak this scripture to you from Romans chapter 12 verse 19 um, and we're going to be talking a bit about revenge and repayment and what this could lead to. So in Romans 12 verse 19 it says, do not take revenge my dear friends but leave room for God's wrath for it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay says the Lord. And th this is just such a it, it would almost be menacing if it was like a, you know, a superhero movie or something like that. But it's just so like, oh, God is cool. He's so awesome. Like, do not take revenge. And it can be so difficult when you see the opportunity, when you have the opportunity, when you feel like you're in a position that is valid to do so. You think you've got full right to do that. God says, do not take revenge, but leave room for God's wrath. Like, don't you know, be playing the hand of God and trying to do things for yourself. Um, it is his to repay. So whatever somebody has done to you, God will repay it. And it says, leave room for that because God will do something. It's not saying leave room and just like chill, let it fizzle out, you know, time is a healer. Like, no, it doesn't say that. It says leave room for God's wrath because it is coming for something that is unjust. But following on from that, I also want to advise that don't let this be an excuse to sin. If somebody has done something against you, if something has offended you away from God, that is isolated from then your actions going on from that. You can choose then what to do, how you feel off the back of that. You know, it can be difficult to, you know, this isn't a generalization for all things, you know, some things you're going to be feeling awful, you're going to, you know, be in a different, maybe, differing head spaces, but do not let this be an excuse to sin. In Ephesians chapter 4 verses 26 to 27, it says, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. So this is something that I was just talking about, like, we as humans are so ready and quick to pass judgment, to be angry and to do these things that the scripture warns against. And honestly, this is not a time after something has happened to you like this to then, you know, sin yourself. Because as adults always say, as people always say, when you're a child, like two wrongs don't make a right. And this is so true. And I think it might actually have root in scripture because, you know, it's saying be angry and do not sin. Um, nor give place to the devil. When you're sinning, you're ultimately uh, aligning yourself with the work of the enemy because the enemy does uh, revenge off his own back, all of that stuff. He, you know, he's the father of all lies, all of this stuff. So it's not something that a child of God should exercise because we have a father that cares for us and that will exercise his justice righteously. Um, and when we do that, when we try to do that, when we try to, you know, pass judgment, pass uh, revenge, we see even in our justice system, it's not perfect and uh, it's not foolproof, but God is, God is foolproof. So trusting in him is the best thing to do 100%. And it's so much more easier said than done because I've definitely fallen short of this standard and, you know, even just thought things that it's like, I, should, I probably shouldn't have thought that, you know, even though I didn't do something, I've had thoughts that it's like, that's not edifying and that's also not good. It's just not good. So it's the best place that you can be in to surrender and make space for God to do his thing because God does it best. Another thing is in le having an excuse to, you know, don't let this be an excuse to sin, whatever's happened to you, whatever's offended you away from God um, is seeking leadership in the wrong places. So you might have bad shepherds and that's something that you can do mindfully and you're disobedient from God purposely or you're doing it absent-mindedly and you're being irresponsible. So we should always be mindful of who's leading us, where they're taking us and how we're responding to that. Are we drifting further from God? Are we drifting closer to God? Are we walking close to God? Because you know, it shouldn't be something we're just drifting, you know, willy-nilly. Like choosing God is 
an important thing every day. It's a choice. It's not something that we do subconsciously. It's definitely not something we do naturally. Our hearts are naturally in rebellion from God, you know. Um, it says in Matthew that we should watch and pray that we fall not into temptation because the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So we need to be mindful of who we're following, who are our leaders, do we have bad shepherds, you know? Are we allowing ourselves to be led by people who don't lead us closer to God, but actually lead us further away? And a scripture to support this is from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3, and it says, For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. And this is about living in the flesh and not in the spirit. And this is an immediate withdrawal from intimacy with God because, as I just said, you know, the flesh and the spirit are at enmity with each other. Um, and again, that scripture from Matthew 26, 41, which it says, watch and pray that you will not fall into temptation for the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Um, and what does the flesh lead to? You know, the flesh never leads to anything good in the Bible. When people go after their flesh, it never leads to a good thing. Thing. So that is just something to keep in mind. If you're going after things of the flesh, if you realize that you're less in tune with the Holy Spirit and you're more in tune with the needs and desires of your body and your flesh, that is never a good place to go. And there's a whole thing in the book of James where it talks about the whole process of, uh, the whole process of evil. And I'm just going to talk about it now. I was going to say it off the top of my head and I was like, I already wrote it down. So let's get into that. I'm just going to change my camera battery because it's flashing red at me. So I'm just going to quickly change that and we'll get into this next scripture. So this scripture is from James chapter one, verses 12 through to 18. Um, and there's so much good stuff in here. I'm just going to talk a bit about it and then move on to the next section because it's such a hefty part of scripture, but there's so many good things inside of it. So it's the title, the subtitle of this part of scripture is called Loving God Under Trials. And it says, blessed is the man who endures temptation for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Interesting. It's just such an amazing passage, and you can honestly go so much deeper into this, but I really wanted to focus on a few things. So the first thing um, was that being tempted and the whole idea of suffering and all of that, like what I was saying earlier about God actually willing us to suffer. Sometimes it's for our good, but it's not all the time. I don't think it's a blanket um, conclusion that we can draw to say that God does this, God wills this, because we genuinely don't know and we don't know what purposes he has for the different things that we go through. But it definitely says that God does not tempt us. He might test us in certain ways, but he definitely does not tempt us in a way that we would sin as a result of it. The next thing um, was talking about this cycle of sin and this whole process. It just, it's awful. It's so awful. And the way that it aligns itself and parallels itself to the idea of a pregnant woman about to give birth to a child. And it's talking about sin and the way that sin grows and uh, flourishes in someone's life. And it then... Uh, brings forth and it gives birth and then when it's full grown it brings forth death there's just nothing beautiful about this and it parallels itself with the imagery of a pregnant woman like it's the complete opposite when you would give birth you're giving birth to life when this uh, person grows older you're having a fruitful amazing life hopefully and in this there's nothing but rot and decay as a result of a birth it's awful so um, it does say that, you know, every good gift comes from God. 
and anything that we might think that you know is good apart from him is not truly good um the next thing i wanted to say as i was saying before about trusting in god knowing his character and trusting in that truth of his character um, it's telling us that there's no variation, there's no shadow of turning in him. And I just found that so peaceful because it's telling us that God is not a deceiver, that he's who he says he is and he's truthful. So we can trust in him because he is who he says he is. Um, and this is something that is just such a beautiful picture because then we can know that we're building trust from a place of peacefulness not a place of questioning and doubt and oh my gosh is it you know what what is true about god what is you know not true and how, what can i believe what should i believe what shouldn't i believe we're actually knowing that he is the good shepherd that he's leading us in a good way because we know him we know there's no variation there's no shadow of turning in him so we know that when we feel far from him actually we know we can know who he is because there's no like um He's not trying to withdraw himself from us. He wants us to know that there's no shadow of turning in him and he gives us good things. He gives us every good thing. So let's get on to some solutions. I feel like I've talked enough, so let's get on to some solutions. If you're feeling far from God, what are the solutions to this? Um, it's very simple. It's very simple. And there's no like 10 step program to this. It's literally two things that I have written down with scripture to back that up. and. The first one is to fall in love with Jesus again. You have to have a greater passion for Jesus than you do have for your sin. And he will help you with that. The Holy Spirit will help you with that. Um, in Luke 10 verses 27, it says, And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbour as yourself. So it's telling us just the way to love God. We should do it with all of these things, with all our effort, with all of our strength. Um, and that's just so powerful because how often do we do that about anything? Like, if we're passionate about anything, we should be passionate about our relationship with God, passionate about maintaining that, passionate about being vigilant about what influences that and what takes us away, what draws us closer in that space. Um, and the second thing, which I think is such an important thing, and I don't think we talk about it enough, is to actually crucify your flesh. Um, and practically, this will take sacrifice. Are you watching something that you shouldn't be? Now's the time to stop watching it. Are you listening to something that you shouldn't be? Now's the time to stop listening to it. Are you following someone that you shouldn't be? Now's the time to press unfollow. It will take fasting. It will take prayer. It will take deliverance in some cases. You know, things that are entered into your life uh, slowly and slowly and slowly will not be removed so instantaneously unless God does a miracle. You know, he's a miracle worker. But I think intentionally doing this takes effort and vigilance and surrender. It takes sacrifice. So God wants to actually build something strong within us. He wants our spirit to be strong in him so that when we're facing things in this world, we won't be easily misguided and led away from him. Because, you know, if we truly learn obedience, that is what God desires. He says, um, you show, we show him that we love him by our obedience, you know, obeying his commands. If you love me, you'll do as I say. If you love me, you will um, obey my commands. And he's not saying that because he just wants us to do what he wants and it's Simon says, but actually he's doing that because it leads to fruitfulness and goodness and, uh, you know, a freedom in our relationship with him instead of being stuck in a place of bondage to all these things that don't actually help us and add and edify our relationship with God. Um, so to finish, I just want to kind of summarise and conclude this video to say that this is a heart issue. Ultimately, sometimes we might not actually like be far from God, but we might feel far from God. You know, the work is done. Jesus died on the cross. He raised, you know, he's done the work. It's finished. So it's not like when we feel far from God that we're actually, you know, a million miles from him. No, he's done the work and we're still a child of God, no matter how we feel. But we must continually recenter our affections on Christ. And we can only do this through the work of the Holy Spirit. Um, and you don't need to do this alone. You can do this in community. You can do it with a trusted friend. You know, 
if you don't have friends, maybe that church community is there for you and you can have those relationships strengthen you and just reading your word will really help you to see other people's experience of this and the times that other people in the scriptures have felt far from God or have been far from God and the ways in which God helped them and guided them back to himself. Um, and I just want to conclude with this scripture from Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9 and it says know therefore that you that the Lord your God is God the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations so I just want to finish this video off by praying a quick prayer but first of all I just want to say that God is faithful and like I was saying it's sometimes when we feel that distance from God we're not actually distant from him it's just that maybe we have deprioritized our bible reading schedule and that's why you feel like oh, I just don't feel as intimate with God anymore but actually your relationship with God isn't defined by the things that you do you know it's defined by what he's done for us and if you maintain that stuff like Bible reading and, you know, prayer and all of these stuff is great, but ultimately that doesn't define our relationship with God. It helps us, you know, it helps us with our hearts, our sinful hearts to, you know, stay close to God, have that intimacy with him, but ultimately it doesn't define our relationship with him. Um, so yeah i would say that you know reading your bible actually getting into a community that loves jesus that is the best thing to do to follow on from this you know recenter your hearts recenter your affections on him and crucify your flesh you know make the sacrifices that are necessary disclose with a trusted person or trusted people trusted community what you're dealing with and what you're struggling with and hopefully people can meet you in that space and help you forward um, because sometimes we just can't do it of our own strength and we need uh, we need God, we need our community around us to help us go forward. So let's pray. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you so much for everybody that is watching this video. I thank you God for what you've done in and through us Lord, that your son Jesus Christ was sent to this earth to live and die and be raised again. Lord, we thank you so much for the sacrifice that you so willingly gave to us. I thank you, Lord God, for what you did in and through your son, Jesus Christ. And we thank you so much, Lord, for, yeah, just what you've done in and through us. Lord, we thank you for those who are watching, who know you and have been walking with you. And if they're feeling far from you, Lord, I pray that you would, by your Holy Spirit, breathe new life into them, Lord. Help them to see with refreshed perspective and a softened heart towards you, Lord, of what their situation really is, Lord, who you are, Lord. I pray that you'd bring into remembrance who they are in you. And I pray that with your perfect peace that abounds all understanding, they would go forward in a productive way, in a way with community and um, love and patience and with a keen heart to learn, Lord. Um, I pray, Father, that they would recenter and re-establish their affections on you and i pray for those who don't yet know you who are seeking or that have just never heard of you before lord god i pray that if they're watching this video that you would help them to come to know you that your holy spirit would um, help them to come into salvation lord come into relationship with you and i pray father god thanking you so much for the work that you're doing through this world for your glory and we just pray thanking you lord for the relationship that we have with you that you define that you loved us first lord that we could love you back and we love you so much lord we thank you so much for the grace and mercy that you extend to us and we thank you father god for the opportunity to be your children and we thank you lord for the way that you'll predictably help us to go forward we thank you father god that your word is a lamp unto our feet and we thank you father that we can go forward with confidence that we can boldly approach your throne of grace in jesus mighty name amen thank you lord jesus and i just want to repeat that scripture as we finish from hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 where it says let us therefore draw near with boldness unto the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and may find grace to help us in time of need. And that will be all from me today. If you haven't already, make sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe to my channel and I'll catch you in my next one. Stay blessed and bye.